Steve, I was tuning the permissions in my Google Cloud project and that broke my Cloud Run service. Uh, there's no undo button, so I can't get back to a working state. Well, infrastructure as code might have prevented that. Let's see how. Welcome back to the show, Steve. I'm so happy you're here uh, to tell us about reliability. You have some solid experience. Thanks, Martin. Yeah, I was a site reliability engineer, or SRE, inside Google for over a decade. I worked on search, Android, YouTube, and cloud. Now my job is helping developers understand how to build reliable systems in the cloud. And you said infrastructure as code could help me restore my project settings? Yeah, infrastructure as code, or IAC, is like using version control for your infrastructure. We all know it's safer to keep the application code in source control. It's a good idea to do the same for your infrastructure. For example, I have a web app here that uses Cloud Run, a Firestore database, and a few other components. Let's say I'm playing around with the service account settings and I accidentally remove a role from one of them. Now my users will get an error message. The web app is broken. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened to my application. Right. The application is broken now, and we're losing money. Everyone is stressed, and the application needs to come back online ASAP. It's hard to do troubleshooting in this kind of environment. Yep, been there, done that. So instead of troubleshooting, let's run the Terraform file that describes our last known good configuration. I run Terraform apply in this terminal, then I confirm, and off it goes. This may take a few minutes. And now is restoring the service accounts in your project? Yeah, it's restoring the service accounts, the Cloud Run services, my database settings, any virtual machines I might have, and so on. And now it's done. Let's try accessing the web app again. The app is working again. We didn't have to do any troubleshooting in a stressful situation. Ah, excellent. And you use Terraform for this? Yeah, I use Terraform, but there are alternatives like Pulumi and others. Some cloud providers also offer their own tools. The one thing they have in common is that they update the infrastructure in a project, like you might do in the Cloud Console or on the command line with the gcloud command. I don't have infrastructure as code in my project now, and I'm a little overwhelmed. How can I get started? Sure. First, describe your infrastructure as runnable files that you can check into source control. It's fine to do this for part of your system and expand as you grow more comfortable. Then your goal is to set things up so that if someone changed the infrastructure in your project, you'd be able to recover in minutes. Finally, this may be weeks or months down the road. Set up a reconciliation loop to prevent infrastructure drift. All right, uh, tell me more about that first item on your list. Okay, by having your infrastructure described in runnable files, you can see the desired state of your infrastructure. For example, if your project includes cloud run services, this desired state would describe things like in which region the service is deployed, if each service is open to anonymous users or if it's authenticated, and what service accounts are used. Now that these settings are in runnable files, you can update them with precision and collaborate around them uh, just like you would with source code. Could you give us an example of that? Sure. Let's say you have a cloud run service that is public and you described it using Terraform. Here's what it would look like. Now let's say in the next release, this Cloud Run service should be an authenticated service that can only be called by other services, not by end users. A developer would update the Terraform file accordingly and submit it to source control. And then that change would use the same approval process as any other code change? Yes. The developer would create a pull request and it would be reviewed by another developer who might ask questions or propose changes. When the change has been approved and it's time to release, the next version of the system, the Terraform file would be run and change the authentication setting for the Cloud Run service. Back when I worked in startups, we used to document the production environment very carefully. Is that the same thing? Not really. Uh, a document still has to be interpreted by a person who might mis make mistakes or misunderstand. This is less ambiguous and less prone to errors if you specify the infrastructure in these runnable files. I have a bunch of gcloud commands in a runnable shell script. Is that infrastructure as code? Kind of, but that shell script does the same set of steps every time, regardless of the current state of the running system. We call that an imperative language. Terraform, Pulumi, and some other tools like them use declarative languages. That means 
that you specify what your environment should look like. The tool then figures out what needs to change, if anything. Hmm, uh, that sounds like idempotency. That's right. These changes are idempotent. That is, they can be run again and again without any unintended side effects. That makes them safer than a simple imperative script, which might go off and make the same VM over and over every time you ran it if you weren't careful. Ah, very good. Item number two in your list has to do with uh, recreating a deleted project. Well, hopefully you have some safeguards in place so that your projects can't be easily deleted by mistake, but it's a good litmus test. Ask yourself, how long would it take to recreate your production application if its project was deleted? You can reduce that time significantly with IAC. Got it. So once you have those runnable infrastructure files, you can use them to create new environments. For example, when a new developer joins your team, you may want to set up a new development project for them. If you have runnable infrastructure files, you can do that in minutes. I guess the same goes for new test environments. You're right, it does. For example, you might want to set up a short-lived test environment for a major new feature of your application. IAC makes that easy. What about data in a database? Uh, that would be needed too to set up a new project, right? That's right. Data is more complex, so it's best to use dedicated tools for that. For example, you may use database tools to back up your production data at in regular intervals, and you probably have a different set of data for development that doesn't include sensitive production data. You'd use IAC to create your infrastructure, then you'd use a database tool to restore data into it. Makes sense. Let's say I have created infrastructure files so I can restore my system in minutes. Then the last item on your list mentions a reconciliation loop. What's that? So this is an extension of IAC, but many teams find it useful. Here's how it works. People might make changes to your production or test environments outside of IAC. For example, someone in your organization might notice that a service account has too many privileges. They might change that manually in the cloud console. And that could break the application. Yes, it could break the application. But even if it doesn't, we can no longer be sure what our infrastructure looks like or when it changed. We need a way to notice changes made outside of our IAC tool. And what should we do if we notice a change? Well, you could report the change or you could overwrite it. It's up to you which you prefer. You may want to start with just reporting. By sending a diff between the desired environment and the actual environment, it's like an alert. And how would I get started with this reconciliation loop? Well, you'd set up a nightly check, like in a cron. Then you would run the check more often to see if you see some benefits. One option is to run it against a subset of your infrastructure, if that subset is extra important. All right, I have some questions for you, Steve. Go ahead, Martin. So I already have a CICD pipeline based on your recommendations from a previous video. How does infrastructure as code relate to that CICD pipeline? Okay, there are two approaches. Either run IAC as part of the CICD pipeline. There would be two passes, one to update the infrastructure, another to deploy applications to it. But you can imagine there could be unintended consequences this way. So you may want to run the dry run command every time and provide the developer an opportunity to evaluate if they want the proposed infrastructure changes to be applied or not. Got it. And what's the other approach? The other approach is to update infrastructure separately, like just on initial creation and then periodically after that. These might be suggested by security or compliance teams, and they could be even be managed separately. Again, the best practice here would be to do the dry run first, like Terraform plan, and inform the app owners of the intended changes before they are applied. You have to find the right approach that's right for you, your application, and your team. And in some uh, organizations, there is a separate infrastructure team. Does that change things? Then IIC may run outside of that CI-CD pipeline. The infrastructure team could choose to release updates on a different cycle, but they'd still use IIC when they do that. The infrastructure experts can deliver templates to the developers, so the developers don't have to become infrastructure experts themselves. For example, they may create a Terraform template for an internal-only cloud-run service. That saves time for the developers, and it means that the infrastructure is standardized across applications. The infrastructure team will do less firefighting and more designing of fire trucks. <laughs> I love that analogy, Steve. So my Google Cloud project has evolved over time as I've made dozens and dozens of tweaks over the years. How do we even get started with infrastructure as a code? Well, there are tools that can inspect your GCP project and create IAC descriptions of your current state. 
you can get started by running this gcloud command. There are also third-party tools which are more specialized and maybe a better fit for you. Use one of these tools to get your current state. Focus on one service that you know well, like Cloud Run, and make sure the ISE files work really well for that service in a test environment. Then expand to other parts of your system as you gain confidence. All right, Steve, that was a lot of information. What are the takeaways? First, describe your infrastructure as runnable files that you can check into source control. It's fine to do this for part of your system and then expand as you grow more comfortable. Then keep working on this until you've set things up so that if someone changed the infrastructure in your project, you'd be able to recover in minutes. Finally, and this may be weeks or months down the road, set up a reconciliation loop to prevent infrastructure drift. Sounds good, Steve. Thanks for sharing this with us. Thanks for having me, Martin. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you have questions for Steve or me, please enter them in the comments below. Also, let me know if there are other serverless topics you'd like to see in future episodes. I read every single comment. Until next time.